All right, right where we left off, I am back in my interaction system folder because I need to create another child blueprint of this base interactable. So it is going to be my quest giver underscore BP. And it will go into my quest system folder. Open it up. And for the item, I am going to go over to where it's got the item and just clear it because I am going to add a skeletal mesh just like we did on the shopkeepers. And this is going to be the mannequin. Let's see. Rotator 90 degrees, just because I don't know why, but it always seems like you need to. And I will put her right here for now. And I'm just going to give her an. Uh, under the animation, I'm just going to set use animation asset and then idle. That way we don't have to set up all the other stuff for her right now. So now, oh, once we have all that, we also need to set that she is not a health potion, she is an interactable, and we don't want her to get destroyed. So that's under the quest giver BP self, the item, nope, the item name, and these other ones that we set up. Alright, so now once I interact with her, we need to establish a few things. First thing we need to do is actually set up our user interfaces. So I'm going to create a widget blueprint that is going to be quest screen underscore widget. And then I'm going to create one more that is quest icon underscore w. So the first one I'm going to open is the quest icon. So I'm going to change it from fill screen in the top right to desired or desired on screen. I don't remember. I don't know if it matters. I'm going to drag a button onto the canvas panel. And I'm going to set its size to what was its size? Quest icon. It'll be a lot cleaner than this when we do it, I promise. Let's see. Was the button 375 by 50 that's a good look for it crap that's the wrong button that's the wrong okay back in the right one now so that was 375 by 50 all right I'm gonna drag a text block out onto the button and this is going to be this is gonna say the quest name change its detail name to quest name make it a variable adjust the font to your liking I'm gonna go with light and that's looking all right now in the graph I'm gonna get rid of pre-construct and tick because off of construct we need to establish a few things over here so I'm gonna add a new variable over on the left that is the quest info kind of like the item info we would get in order to display our on our item icons we got to do the same thing with the quest so this will be quest info struct compile I'm gonna, oh we don't need to get the button but I need to get the quest name text and set the text set text of text So I'm going to get my quest info out and break it open so that I can get our quest name and hook it just like that. Now what we want to do is we want to create or do our quest screen stuff. So I'm over in the quest screen and the first thing I'm going to do is wrap it with a scale box and a size box. My width and height, just like always, are my specifications. 1920 by 1080. Uh, you can use whatever 16 by 9 ratio that you like, or if you've got a different device layout, you know, whatever goes there. All right, and now I'm going to. All right, I'm going to get a canvas panel, drag it out. 
So I'm going to make sure I got that second one highlighted, and I'm going to put it anchored left center. Set its offsets, position X 50, offset is Y 0, and the size of it, yeah, I got to check one more time. Quest screen. Probably get away with using a border, but it was 425 by 750. All right. All right, so with that set, it's going to be 425 on the X and 750 on the Y. Now for the alignment on the Y, I'm going to set it to 0.5 so that it's halfway in between. Now I'm going to add an image to the back of this thing. Select it and set its offs anchor to the full thing. Offsets all zero. Color and opacity is black with an alpha of 0.5. That way it's kind of see-through. It looks nice, I think. You know, for rudimentary. It rudimentary is a word, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, alright. So now I need a uniform grid panel, and I'm going to drop it right on that second canvas panel. Now this one, I'm going to anchor to the top, that uh, all the way across. I'm going to set its offset right to zero, offset left to zero, but position Y, 25. Yeah, you know what? Offset left 25, offset right 25. Give it a little, a little cushion to it. Now the size Y is going to be 50, just like our button. But, oh, actually, we're going to size it to content, so this part doesn't matter. All right, so size it to content. <laughs> Okay. All right. So I'm going to compile that real quick. And let's see. So now in the graph, get rid of pre-construct and event tick. So once it's constructed, we need a few variables first. So I'm going to set up a variables. So there's going to be the quest giver, which will be an, a reference to that quest giver blueprint object reference and we're gonna make it to where this is exposed on spawn so that as soon as this quest screen is created we can tell it who this quest giver is so expose on spawn and instance editable so this expose on spawn once uh, like a well let me show you if you create a widget and then you select the quest screen you'll see right here it has that quest giver where you can just directly plug in so when we create it when we interact with the character because it'll be called from the quest giver blueprint we can plug in directly to it and then it'll automatically know all right then we need what do we need I think we just need a row so we're going to add a row integer variable because it's going to be set up for a uniform grid to stack on top of each other. But we don't need a column because I'm going to set this up in a way that, um, I mean, you can add a column if you want to and do it the way, like the inventory, but I thought it'd be nice to have these kind of stack one at a time, you know? So we'll do that right there. And then this is the quest screen, so we don't need that. All right, so we're done here for just a minute because we need to set up our quest giver to have our information. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So I'm going to get rid of begin overlap and the event tick. We will need that begin play. I'm going to get rid of it for now. I don't care. All right, under the variables, I am going to set quest list. This will be all the quests that this actor has for us so it'll be a quest list enumerator and I'm gonna tick that little eye open so that we can see it from the outside now I'm gonna set oh wait oof. okay before we jump from that one we need to set it to an array in case they got multiple quests to give us now we are going to need one more of the same thing called saved quests 
Now this is uh, because the way we're going to set up its ability to have progress locked quests, uh, it'll check every so often to see if uh, if your if your completed quest list contains the prerequisite, and if it does, or if it doesn't, then it'll remove certain quests from the quest list, but we need to be able to put them back, so that's what that's going to be for. This is, that was a jumbled up explanation. I'm sorry. I'm out of practice on this. Shouldn't go away so long. Anywho, I'm going to take a look real quick. Quick like. Quick as a bunny. Quest giver. Alright, yeah, quest list. Quests. Save quests. Okie doke. This one. So this is what we need for right now. Compile that. Now out here. Now you'll see we can actually tell it what quests we want it to have. Etc. So just to show you real quick, let's go ahead and set up our interaction with the quest giver. So for now it's just going to be on event interact. We'll iterate on this further later on. We're going to drag out our quest list. And for now, we're just going to do a four. No, no, no. Oh, we need to do a branch. Golly, I don't know why it's so hard to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Let's see. We need a new Boolean called quest screen open question mark. That'll be a Boolean single style. We'll plug that in right there. And if the quest screen is not open, then we want to open it. So I'm going to drag off here, create widget, widget, widget. All right, it's going to be that quest screen that we set up. The quest giver is going to be a self-reference to this blueprint that we're using. We will promote it to a variable called quest screen. I don't think I did that in the other one, but it'll be it doesn't matter if you do or don't. Um, actually, it will come in handy because instead of creating it every time, we'll just add it back to the viewport if it's already valid. So we'll drag off the set, and we're going to add to viewport. Nope, nope. So I'm going to get rid of that for real quick. Now, if it is on screen, then we want to remove it from parent. So I'm going to drag out my quest screen reference that we just set up. Type remove from parent. And add that to the true. Now it's not going to do anything, So, but at the end we can do set quest screen open. And at the end right here, set quest screen closed. Now, in the quest screen widget itself on construct, we want to set the row back to zero. And I forgot to set that. In the designer, we also need to make sure that that uniform grid panel is a variable. And I'm going to call it my quest grid is variable. So after we set it back to zero, I'm going to grab that out. And I'm going to clear all the children from it in case it's not the first time we've opened it. Then I'm going to get my quest giver, and here's where we're going to need that quest list. So I'm going to grab my quest list out of it. I'm going to get the length. Ah, you can't get the length. I'm just going to type length. I'm going to subtract one from it because we're going to be using a for loop. And since it goes from zero to its number, and this go length starts at one, That'll balance it out, you know, just like we did all the other ones. I'm gonna get a for loop, not a for each, but a for loop. Plug that in right there. And for the loop of how many quest items we have, we are going to create a widget that is our quest icon. Now we're going to set its quest in. 
info. Set quest info. Here's where it might seem a little bit tricky. But we are going to, from our quest list, get a copy of the item at index, at the first index. Then we are going to need to get data table row. Data table is our quest data table. I'm going to plug this in right here. Now from that enumerator where we're getting the quest name, we need to do an enum oop, to string and then plug that string into the row name so that we can grab out that quest info and set it to that new widget that we just created. Then I'm going to grab out my quest grid because we want to add this child to it. So we're going to add child to uniform grid. Plug that in right there. The content is the quest icon widget way over here, which I hate wires crossing, but I'm going to just have to deal with it for now, I guess. <laughs> so I'm going to hook my row up to right there. Is it row or column? Column goes to the side, row goes up and down. Okay, so column will always be zero on mine. If you want yours to be like, maybe you got three rows of quests, then you can have that, but um, I'm just gonna set it this way for this one. And then after we add the thing, I'm gonna grab out my row one more time and increment that integer to increase it by one so that we add it to the next row each time. So I'm gonna compile that real quick. Let's check it out. Let's hopefully working if I can say words. Alchemical Romance, there is two buttons. Why has you got two buttons? But at least hey, it said the name. Oh, it's because... <laughs> okay, that's why. Yeah, Alchemical Romance, all right. Good deal. So, and then I can close it, run away, come back, close it again, all good. Now, one more thing that I want to do to the quest screen widget. No, 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 no. In the quest giver. Instead of creating this over and over again, let's back this up just a little bit. I'm going to grab out my quest screen widget reference and check to see if it's valid. Because if it is, then it's already been created. We don't want to keep stacking it over and over again. And if it is not valid, we will create it. And if it is valid, then we'll add it to the viewport. Just like that. Now, last thing real quick for this video. We're going to get the player controller, and we're going to adjust our input mode. So I'm going to set input mode, game and UI. The widget to focus is my quest screen. Drop this down a little bit, and I want to set show mouse cursor. That way we can see what we're going to be clicking on. Set that to true. Just like that. And I'm going to do it up here. Get player controller one more time. We want to set the input mode back to game only. And then we will set show mouse cursor. Oh, monsieur. Monsieur. Set the show mouse cursor back to false. Just like that. So now when we run up and talk to her, it's like we're actually getting ready to select some... Oh, that's the wrong person. So now we can click, and we can run away, and it's working. Good deal. So now we'll, in the next one, go over how to start adding quests to our character's quest logs. So I will see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.